There has been an ongoing debate in the artist community on which are the primary colors, whereas red, yellow, blue, magenta, yellow, cyan, or red, green, and blue. In this video, we explore all three different color schemes, starting with red, green, blue. Now, for most people watching this video, you're pretty much aware that the additive color scheme or the primary colors of light are red, green, and blue. In which red and green mix to make yellow, green and blue mix to make cyan, and blue and red mix to make magenta. Whereas the debate more or less is in which paint or primary color system works the best in paint. Now two different examples used here are the traditional red, yellow, and blue color scheme, which crimson red is used, in which I've used naphthol crimson, which is red number 170, cadmium lemon yellow, which is yellow number 3, and ultramarine blue pigment, which is blue number 29. And then to the right, there's the magenta yellow cyan color wheel, which quinacridone magenta is used, which is red number 122, Lemon yellow, which is yellow number three, and phthalo cyanine blue green shade, which is pigment blue 15 colon three. Now, first off, as you can see right away, there's one, what appears to be one clear winning, winner between the two, which is the magenta cyan and yellow color scheme next to the red, blue, and yellow color scheme. And that is because I chose a blue with a slight bias toward violet, a yellow which is slightly biased toward green, and a red which is biased slightly toward violet. And the reason these color choices are chosen is because the green and the yellow helps with the blue to create the teal, green, and lime color whereas the violet bias and the blue helps correct the red to give you the indigo violet and red violet. Whereas in magenta, yellow, and cyan, you have this rose red violet, this cerulean blue, which is green shade, and then a yellow, which is slightly biased toward green. In the left, you notice that between red and yellow, the oranges are more vivid, whereas the greens and violets are more subdued and more natural, like earth tones. In the magenta, yellow, and cyan color wheel, you notice that the indigos through purples are more vibrant, the greens and teals are more vibrant, but there's a slight amount of color loss, a lot of more subduction in the red to orange color scheme. And that's because I chose a cool yellow to complement the violet red. And that's why the oranges are more subdued, but you have more vivid greens. And you have more vivid purples. So back to the red, green, blue color wheel, the added color wheel. You notice that you have yellow, which is accurately depicted in the cool yellow. Whereas if you notice that the magenta in pigment actually exists somewhere between red and this fuchsia purple color magenta, which puts it in the rose red violet category. The same thing with cyan. If you can see in this other example in which oil colors are used, cyan, once thinned out, actually gives you a cerulean blue, which actually exists between indigo blue and turquoise or teal. And uh, I think that's where a lot of the debate goes into what constitutes as a red color versus magenta or a blue color versus cyan. Now obviously in the name thalocyanine, this is your cyan blue. So this is cyan and this is magenta between red and purple. Whereas here, magenta and cyan are directly between blue and red and blue and green. In paint, 
And a lot of artists, there's a little back and forth on whether this is cyan, whether this is turquoise, aquamarine. You know, uh, there's a, there's an actual pigment out there. It's called cobalt teal that closely resembles this cyan color. And a lot of people wonder, well, why in paint, you know, why, why a lot of artists don't use cobalt teal? Well, that goes into why we don't have a pigment that matches this purple shade of magenta. And this goes back to the magenta yellow and cyan. Now, if you look at uh, this rose color, which you would see here, if one were to use teal, teal almost complements magenta, which would wash out all of these colors between purple all the way to blue. You would have washed out colors. They would not be vivid at all. So in place of teal, cyan is used. Therefore, the blue and the cyan helps kind of correct the purple range while still keeping a lot of vivid and verdant green colors with the loss of teal or turquoise. So in your printing color scheme, these are your primary colors, which can give you most of the colors, but not quite all of them. The same thing with the red, yellow, and blue traditional color wheel. You can get most of the colors, but you get a little bit of washed out greens and teals and Fairly decent indigos and violets, but then as you get into the purple range, you get, instead of purple, you get a red-violet purple. Now, if anybody's familiar with Bob Ross, Bob Ross liked to use alizarin crimson, which we can see here. These are the colors at face value, and these are colors in which titanium white have been used. So in this color scheme, crimson, yellow, and phthalo blue are used to give all the colors, and which still give you a wide array of colors. And with this red, yellow, and blue color scheme, and this kind of goes into another aspect of painting that uh, is different than light, that with pigments, you have what is called undertone. Whereas you have this crimson red color that at face value, you know, one would assume that it would be a red pigment, but thinned out has an undertone of a rose red violet, unlike, or not unlike, Quinn magenta. And uh, that's why in a lot of um, traditional color schemes, red, yellow, and blue are the primary colors that make up all the colors. So, that being said, like both color wheels are, are valid, I would say, in my own view. It's just it depends on what colors that the artist is biased towards. If the, color, if the artist wants a warmer hue, they go with the red, yellow, and blue color scheme. If they're looking for cooler hues, they go with the magenta, yellow, and cyan. That is because with pigments... There is no color scheme that will give you all of the primary colors. That's why artists use colors like cadmium orange, which is not used in this video, but is an orange that cannot be produced by either mixing red or yellow or magenta and yellow. You have phthalo green, which is a green that is more vibrant than, than can be uh, combined by mixing any type of blue and yellow pigment and even cobalt teal, which in itself is a primary color. And as you can see that this ultramarine blue is more vibrant than any mixture of this blue and magenta. And lastly, there's a, another color, it's called dioxazine purple, which is a purple that is so vibrant that when mixed with cadmium orange can still technically give you all of the colors in between. That is because violet, as you can see, is just one shade under magenta. That way, if you were to mix violet with orange, red is in between those two. Not unlike mixing phthalo green with 
violet, you could still get blue. So there's actually some videos out there in which a lot of artists um, have given an example of how you can mix secondary colors to get your primary colors. But in a nutshell, this is hopefully a way in which can help clarify the debate between which primary color wheel is the best. And I would say in my own view, it's up to the artist.